Hi guys, it's Matt here from MCS Books and today I'm here to do my January wrap up. So I'm going to overview all the books that I read this month and tell you how I rated them on Goodreads. So I read a total of eight books this month and I started off really well. It's just kind of the end of the month that I kind of got a bit slow on my reading challenge, but I'm still ahead on my reading challenge. I set my reading challenge this year up to 50 books, so I'm definitely ahead and doing well at keeping up with that. I'm hoping February next month will be the month where I can get back into the swing of reading as opposed to what I've been doing in the past week and my lack of. So now I'm just gonna whiz through all the books that I read this month and tell you what I thought of them. The first book that I read this month was this one, The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I got this beautiful edition um, as a Christmas present, so I really enjoyed it. And of course it was like the first thing I had to read as soon as it came into January this year. I rated this book four stars. Now I'm sure most of you probably know the storyline, it's just the story of Patroclus and Achilles and it's basically their love for each other um, and how it developed from when they first met until you know how it ends. So I rated this four stars, it could have been five stars but I think it was just a bit too heavy on the romance at the start and you didn't really get to know the characters so much. But towards the end it definitely picked up and I definitely got a lot more into it. So I'm glad I read it and I can't wait for Madeline Miller's next book this year, Circe, which hopefully will be as good. Then the next book I read was actually a play. It was Peter and Alice by John Logan. And this is a play about the real life Alice Liddell and the real life Peter, I can't remember his surname. These were the people that inspired Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland. And it was a fictional retelling of the moment where these two people actually met in real life at a bookshop opening, I think it was. It was a really trippy play that kind of messed with memory and time and the way that inspiring these fictional characters that became so popular kind of affected them growing up and um, and the pressures upon them for being these people. So I gave this play five stars. I really enjoyed it. It was a really nice, quick read, as plays always are, of course, but I, I got for it so quickly and I couldn't put it down. So then the next book that I read was Human Acts by Han Kan. Now, I wanted to read this quite quickly because I was reading my boyfriend's copy when I was at his house. And I, re and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's not exactly the sort of book that you would say that you really enjoyed. It was an account of the atrocities that happened in a South Korean town in the 1980s. And Han Kan lived in this town at one point in her life. So she returned there to kind of do all her research about the event that happened. And then, and the story is kind of like a fictional retelling, but also based on real things and real people and it's kind of her imagining and her expressing what happened in this moment. So it was kind of a really nice way of learning about history because it wasn't just fact after fact and quite dull. It was, it was poetic, it was beautiful, it was harrowing. I ended up giving it four stars. I really enjoyed it so much more than I enjoyed The Vegetarian. There were just a few things that I wasn't as attached to so kind of I didn't, I didn't feel like I was feeling everything that Han Han wanted me to feel. The next book I read was this one, Refusal of the Shadow, Surrealism and the Caribbean. This is a non-fiction book. It's a collection of essays from own voice writers in the Caribbean. And it discusses how they use surrealism and poetry to kind of break into or to kind of develop their cultural heritage and their cultural voice. This was a really powerful collection of essays. I gave it five stars and I reviewed it here on YouTube and I'll link to the video down below. I think it's definitely worth a read. It's an, it's an important book and worth every praise that it can get. Then after that, the next book I read was this one. It was Wailing Ghost by Pooh Songling. This was a Christmas gift from my dad and it's one of five Little Black Classics that I received. This one is just really cute. It's just short, very short stories. And they're kind of like Chinese folk tales, Chinese fables, and they were just fun, witty, and a little bit dark. Not as dark as I was expecting, but they were really, really enjoyable to read. And it, I just ripped through them all in one sitting. Um, so I definitely, if you want kind of flash fiction, this collection is definitely one to pick up. I gave it four stars in the end because um, I, I think I just wanted a little bit more but and some of the some of the stories weren't as great as the others but m the majority of them were really enjoyable and probably were five stars within themselves. Then the next book that I read was Mythologies by Roland Barthes. I gave this book a three stars. It was actually my lowest star rating of the month. Um, this again was an academic text and it was about how we assign sort of popular items in mass consumption. We kind of give them a new like mythology. So he uses semiotics to analyze these images in like the public eye and everything. 
but I just I couldn't wholly get on board with his ideas. Um, some of the bits, some of the parts that he wrote were quite boring, and there was a very simple analysis, I guess. And then in the second half of the book, he kind of then talks about how he has defined mythologies and he has analysed the creation of mythologies, and then he kind of made it. He took something that was actually really quite simple and that you could pick up yourself within the within each individual analysis. But then at the end, he made it so convoluted and so kind of ridiculous that I was I was like completely not sold at all by every, anything he had to say. So the first half was definitely better than the second half. But anyway, I gave it three stars because I still managed to read it all, which is always something but it just wasn't what I had expected it to be. And then the next book that I read this month was Myth and Meaning by Claude Levi-Strauss. I really enjoyed True State of Peak by Levi-Strauss. And of course, to go with the whole mythology thing from Roman Barthes, I decided to pick up this one. This one was definitely much better than, than Barthes' book. I gave it five stars in the end. It was just very short essays that were originally presentations that Levi-Strauss had made and they were just really interesting. They gave a little bit of backstory to some of the um, mythologies of the native populations within Canada, North America and South America and how they're kind of all linked and stuff. Um, and then he just does like a really nice analysis of it that is not too complicated to understand it. And it was very believable. And I think he just writes so well, Levi Strauss. He's got like a wit and a humor and a really nice voice to read. So yeah, I enjoyed it. And then, the last book that I read this month was this one. It's Six Characters in Search of an Author and Other Plays by Luigi Pirandello. This, had, this is a collection of three plays. We've got, of course, Six Characters in Search of an Author, and then we've got Henry IV, and then we've got So It Is As You Think It. Now, I gave this collection a four stars in the end. It could have been a five stars, but Henry IV, I didn't really enjoy so much. All of these plays kind of discuss um, philosophical ideas of like truth and being and creation of like identities and people, but it does it in a really witty and funny way. And it's also quite dark once you actually read it, especially Six Characters in Search of an Author. Now, of course, the title play was actually my favourite, but I did really enjoy So It Is it, As You Think It. And, and you could definitely see how each three of the plays kind of were all based around similar themes and ideas and the way that he was inspired by each one. So I definitely, definitely appreciated that. Of course, Henry IV wasn't as good, but still, these plays are definitely worth the read. And I would love to see them perform sometime. They are all the books. I did try to read another Claude Lévi-Strauss. I tried to read his Structural Anthropology book. However, it was a lot more academic. I didn't like the translator. I read the translator's note and I didn't like his voice. And I feel like he kind of ruined Lovie Strauss' voice. I'm not going to DNF it, but I am going to be a bit more choicy with the chapters that I read because it's quite a big book. And I only kind of want to read a few of the chapters, the ones that interest me the most. The rest is kind of all logical. It's very academic and a bit kind of common sense, especially if you have studied anthropology before. It's not really anything new to you, most likely. So it's definitely going to go on the back burner. I might just pick up one or two essays as I read. But now I'm going to be starting February, so I've got lots of new books. Don't forget to check out my TBR for next month. I'll, keep, I'll post the link below. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. How did your January go? Did you read all the books that you wanted to? And what did you read? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I shall see you next time for another video. Bye bye.